everyone, Eileen Hall here at scrapbook.com for Sizzix. Today we're going to make this cute little recipe card box and recipe cards that go inside. And we're going to learn how to fuse this cool new material called Ollie Fun onto the mat board and then die cut it and emboss it. So the materials that you're going to need to make this project are your die, and this is your recipe card box. Uh, it holds a 3x4 card, which is also the size of the Project Life, so you can theme it in really anything that you want to do. Because this was a kitchen collection, I called it a, a recipe card box, but it can be anything you want. What I did for this project was to make like a little travel journal, so I put my little camper on there, I'm on a trip called the Paper Trail, and then I have cards that I obviously have not filled in yet, but I could <laughs> for uh, each day of the trip. So this is the die, and we're going to first cover our mat board with this material called Ollie Fun. And this is actually um, a material made by Fair Fairfield, and it's like grocery bag fabric. So it's really nice to die cut because it does not uh, fray and it's nice and clean. So I'm going to cover my project. First, I'm going to cover my map board with these iCraft sheets adhesive. And that's because we really want this to stick on here and not peel off. We'll be opening and closing it, and sometimes it wants to lift off. So this will make sure it's adhered on. So I'm going to. And we're going to cover this side. Well, there might be a few wrinkles, but that's okay when we press it through. It's basically the machine is fusing this to the mat board. We're also going to emboss it so you won't really notice. Okay, so we're going to place that on our die. And we're putting this side down so that this is the side that's going to cut. We'll be on the outside. Make the Sizzix sandwich. Okay, so now we're going to take this off. Okay, you'll see that this piece here uh, did not get the material on it. That's okay. This is one of our tabs, and we're not we're going to peel this off anyway. So let's get rid of these because we like to have paper to paper. Just one less thing to worry about and have to redo. Okay, now we're going to take our box and do our little scoring routine, folding over all the way to break the fibers so it's easier to work with it. Now we're going to emboss this in our folder, our embossing folder up here, and place that inside, put the plate on, and run it through. Now I'm going to back this up just because I don't want that mark on the other side of it. So here we go. We have a nice texture on there. There already is a texture on the material, but this really brings it out. We still have our fold line here. So I'm going to take my Color Box Blends Anchor and just do a nice little highlighting here. And I may even just do the whole thing. So that stands out for when we close the box. That's going to give a nice contrast. They're so easy and I'm not getting my hands dirty, except they already are dirty. Okay, so now we will adhere the box together. So we're going to take our iCraft tape, let's press it down and burnish so it's easier to get it started. 
I love that you can just tear it. You don't have to cut it. And then just start in the middle and peel up. Okay, so this goes together so quickly. The way that I like to do it is set it down on the table so that I know that the bottom is going to be flat. So I just make sure it's sitting flush on the floor and then, oops, it's not in all the way. Can still kind of have a little play there. But you want to make sure that this corner meets. So once you have your box assembled and your edges are all nice and straight, and we could have done this before, but I really like to get it put together before I add the finishing touch here, which is this cute little camper, which I'm going to put on the front using embossing paste. Then I'm going to let it dry for a minute. So I'm going to take a scrap of mat board using it for a spatula and just kind of grab a little bit of the embossing paste, line this up where I'd like. You want to make sure that you're not covering anything where the flap is. So you want to just kind of position it where you want it. So I'll just put it right there. I'm just going to do the trailer on this. On the sample, I did the little stitching on the side, but you get the idea. And then lift up, and you've got a cute little camper on the front. So the next thing that we're going to do, and try not to smudge that. I'm going to set that aside then. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make this cute little tissue paper flower, which everybody loves everywhere I show this, because it's so easy to do, and it gives such a nice festive look anything. I'm going to take my pad pads and what I have here is just a piece of cute tissue paper that I found I think at Target. You can use anything. Now this is folded over a couple times. I think we don't really need that much. I'm going to open this up and just cut a section. Actually, maybe we'll fold this over. This is any, you can make this with any tissue paper. It also works great with um, coffee filters. It's really fun. Okay, so I'm just folding this in half. Now I have probably a total of maybe 10 layers of tissue paper. So here is the flowers uh, with heart petals die. And as you can see, now there are three sizes. I'm just going to do the middle one because I think that's the best proportion for my box. So I'm going to just cut a bunch of layers of this. Cover it up. Oops. And I'm going to run that through. Now when I take that out, I try to keep it in one place uh, with the hole in the middle because I'm going to put a, a brad in here and then that way, if I took them all apart and wrinkled them up, you know, spread them out, I would have to, you know, go through each one and try to stick the brad in, so I just hold it in one, one place. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is take a brad and figure out how to open the box. And it doesn't really have to match because you're not going to see the center. It's just to hold it together. So I'm going to put the brad inside and close it. I'm not going to close it really tightly though because what we're going to do next is we're going to take each layer of the flower and just scrunch it into the middle. And every time we do it we're going to rotate it a little bit. You can also use the end of a, um, of the eraser on pencil to kind of ruffle it up before you start, you know, making this. Uh, I find that this is a really fun thing to do while I'm sitting watching TV. I just cut them and get them ready to go and then I sit there and crinkle. I'm kind of doing two or three at a time. Usually I do one because it just makes it fluffier. But almost done. And just the tighter you squish it the better and rotate. And then just give it one final squish here. Tighten it up, and then this is the fun part. Fluff it out. You have a really cute little flower. 
3D. So what I like to do, I like to add color to that. So I'm going to take my color box blends. I'm just going to add a little bit of color here and there. The other thing about the color box blends is that you can actually use these as sprays if you take off this little cap here and you can take some of the ink because there's so much ink in here. There's 10 times as much ink as there is on a stamp pad. So it could be that your sponge runs out before your ink. So if you have extra ink in here, I just poured some out and put it in a little spray bottle, added water, shook it up, and you've got a nice mister. The other thing you can do is use it on your jelly plate or you can use it to paint with. So anyway, here we have our pretty little flower and that's going to go here on the front of the box. So what you're going to want to do is punch a hole with your crocodile or your paper piercer. I used to like to use my die pick because I always have that on hand. And then you're going to open up this again and just put it right inside. Now the other thing that you can do is place your Velcro down that you're going to use as a closure and catch that inside the bread because then it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, this is what I used. It's a, a little Velcro. It's got a really nice grip to it. So I just put it on here. I would pierce a hole in that too and then put the bread, spread the bread over that and then I take off the back oh, I'll show you even though this isn't the way I did it on the thing but put that there and then you're going to take this piece off and then close it so you know that it's going to be in just the right place you want to let it set and then very carefully peel it apart sometimes oh I forgot about our still a little wet there See, if I waited, that I should have waited longer, but this will tell you exactly where it's supposed to be, and then I would use uh, a stapler or something to keep that punched in there because that'll want to lift up if you're opening and closing repeatedly. Also, on my sample, I believe that I um, filled this in with the color box blends just to give it a little background, yeah. And see how the, the brad is through Velcro. So, that's the box. I think that's a lot of fun. So now we have our finished box and we have these little recipe cards and labels. This is like a little border. You can do this in a lot of different ways. You can have it oriented whatever direction you want. The way that I made these was I took my color box blends and just softly went around the edges and then I used this cute little trailer um, stencil from Stencil Girl by Jamie Fingal and I just positioned these here and I took my color box blends and just kind of did a mixture of inks and then I just wrote in day one and so the thought is that I can journal each day of my trip on front and back and you can fit five of these inside if you arrange them like this but if you don't have these little things on them you can hold more and then you just slide them in and you've got journaling to go Here we have the same box, but it's covered in paper and it has a lot of little metal embellishments and stickers and their journaling cards are uh, different and 3D. Not sure what that is, but it's cute. So they've used different papers and a lot of them come in the 3x4 size. I like how she um, modeled the inside of the box and also her closure. She just used this little uh, hitch fastener and then that with the weight of it keeps the box closed, which I thought was really cool and I love her ribbon too. I'm so glad you could join me for the Sizzix Vintage Kitchen class at scrapbook.com.